Oh my goodness, I learned so much about decision paralysis when researching this video. So the topic of overthinking decisions has been on my to-do list for a long time, but I totally procrastinated writing this video. Um, one, because it usually takes me 10 to 20 hours to write each 15 minute video for my channel. And two, I was kind of dreading this topic because I only had a vague idea about what to say. And then when it came out as the top requested video on my poll, I was forced to make it. So has this ever happened to you? Like you have some big decision to make or some task to complete, but you just keep putting it off because it feels overwhelming. When people are faced with a big complex decision that they aren't certain how to move forward with, it's really common to avoid that task, to delay, to procrastinate, or keep busy with other meaningless tasks. But this can lead to big consequences later. You know, getting written up at work or failing a class or just missing out on a big opportunity because you can't figure out how to move forward. Now, in the last video uh, in this overthinking series, we talked about overthinking decisions and how that is often caused by not knowing how to regulate the emotions around those decisions. And when I started writing this series on overthinking decisions, the emotion regulation piece was the first thing that came to my mind. People struggle to decide because they can't handle the fear of making the wrong choice. But the more I researched, the more I realized that the second you know, huge part of getting overwhelmed and paralyzed by decisions has to do with executive functioning. So in this video, you'll learn what executive functioning is and why it's so essential to making decisions and processing emotions. And you'll also learn five ways you can improve your executive functioning skills. Now, in this video, you'll learn all about how executive functioning is really essential to manage emotions and procrastination and big decisions. And it's a skill that can be learned, but it's a hard skill to learn on your own. So that's where a therapist can be really helpful. So today's sponsor is BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed mental health professional that can help you work through life's challenges, big and small, all from the comfort of your own home. So if you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description for 10% off your first month. So making big decisions with lots of moving parts can overwhelm our brain circuits. Our brains are not quite prepared for the difficulties of the modern world. For our ancestors, their problems were often physical, present, and immediate. Like a decision would be something like, oh, should I plant a crop or go hunting today? Now for us, we're faced with choosing among thousands of careers, millions of tasks, and billions of distractions right on our smartphone. Now, executive function is the mental skill of organizing big pieces of information. It includes working memory, which is like how many ideas we can hold in our head at once, and organization. It includes planning, self-control, prioritizing, time management, and flexibility. Now, for the average person, managing big decisions is already difficult, but the more choices you have, the harder it is to make a decision. Barry Schwartz highlights the problem of too many choices in his excellent TED Talk. He says, we're bombarded with so many options. For example, in my home county, there are over 900 restaurants. Um, Barry Schwartz talks about how there's hundreds of types of salad dressing in the grocery store. It's overwhelming. And Schwartz shares a study showing that the more options an employee has when picking a retirement plan, the less likely they are to choose one. And this leads to losing hundreds of thousands of dollars over their lifetime. So evaluating all of the options is confusing and overwhelming and vague and complicated. And it's not, most of the options we have are not in the present, they're future based. So too many options often overwhelm our executive functioning and we end up not making any choice at all. So how can we support our brain as it tries to process big decisions or complex problems? We provide scaffolds, a structure to help our executive functioning, to prioritize and make decisions. So here's a couple of ways we do this. And you could do this with a coach, you could do this in therapy, but if you learn the skills, you can do this on your own. The first one is to limit your number of options when possible. Like just simplify your freaking decisions. Get rid of some clothes. Make a photo guide of your outfits. Um, my, my aunt and her friend had this rolling lunch date. Guess what, what the hardest part of it was? It was answering the question, where do you want to eat today, right? So to avoid having to decide each Thursday, they just picked a street in the city and they started on the South End and each week they ate at the next restaurant to the North. Like how cool is that, right? Notice how doing that required them to tolerate 
the imperfection of not eating at the most perfectest restaurant ever, right? The food was still fine, but when they limited their options, they were actually happier. It made their lunch date more enjoyable and, you know, less stressful. Number two, to support your working memory, make things visual. Use a flow chart or write down the options on three by five cards that you can like physically move around. I'm a huge fan of paper lists, like make a master list and then like star the priorities and then just take action on one or two. So with my daily to-do list, it's always on paper. But for work, I personally use the software ClickUp, right? They're not a sponsor. I just like their organizational approach, right? I have hundreds of ideas for videos and I just prioritize the ones that I'm working on that week. But in general, I'm a big fan of physical reminders over digital ones. Okay, number three, with a complicated or an overwhelming decision, like choosing a degree in college, just break it down, right? You don't have to choose your major all at once. Pick, pick a couple of jobs that you might be interested in, get an entry level position and try it out, or just take a class or two in the subject and see if you like it, right? Break down these huge decisions into short-term tasks and then just chip away at them one at a time, right? And this is where a goals coach or an accountability partner could be really helpful with this. I once worked with a 25 year old man who we'll call Omar. Now Omar couldn't decide what career he wanted to pursue. He, he was currently working at Burger King, but he really wanted to do something else. He wondered, should he join the military? Should he go to flight school? Should he get his commercial driving license? Should he go back to college? But then every time he started to think about a new job, he'd get overwhelmed with all of the steps. He'd, he'd start researching flight school and then he'd worry about the cost and then he'd look at his bank account and then he'd worry about his credit card debt and then he'd realize his resume wasn't written and then he'd get overwhelmed and he would just go back to watching gamers on YouTube. He spent over 40 hours a week watching YouTube, mostly just to avoid the overwhelming feeling of not knowing which career to take and how to start. So we talked about that in therapy a lot. We broke down tasks, we made lists, we organized ideas. He finally clarified that he wanted to get his CDL, but he didn't have his resume ready. So for weeks, I'd ask him to do that for his homework and he would agree to do that. And then he would just get overwhelmed. He'd come back to therapy and be like, nope, I didn't make my resume this week. So finally, I just brought my laptop to the session. We pulled up a resume template and I made him do it right there. And in like 20 minutes, his resume was done and printed. So sometimes we just need to break down these big tasks into tiny steps. And it also helps to have a coach to support you in the process. Okay, next, clarify what's actually important. Just take the time to do a values clarification activity. When you know what you want in your home, in your relationships, in your career, it, it makes it easy to get really clear on what's most important to you. So you can let go of the small stuff. So when it comes to task management, like schedule in a repeating time each week to plan your biggest priorities and then force yourself to spend 10 minutes every day to clarify the most important tasks. Everything else can kind of fit around that. In my church, people are always sharing this analogy of like a jar and golf balls and sand, right? And you decide what your most important priorities are. You decide those are the golf balls and you put those in the jar first and then you add the sand afterwards. And then you've got a few things that are really important, like, you know, your career, your family, um, living your life purpose, serving God, whatever it is, right? And if you let all these little tasks and all these unimportant things fill up your jar first, you're not gonna be able to fit in all of the golf balls, the most important things in your life. But if on the other hand, you put the most important things in first, tick, 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 then you're gonna have a lot of space to put that sand in. And you maybe can't do every single thing that you want to, but you can get a whole lot more done and your life's gonna be more aligned with the type of life you wanna have. My husband and I always have the conversation, oh, what are your golf balls today? Meaning, what are the most important things you wanna make sure to get done? And everything else can kind of fit around that. Okay, another thing that's really helpful with executive function is to set a time limit, right? Give yourself a deadline, make a list, shorten the list and force yourself to choose within five seconds. Like, don't look back, just say three, two, one, go. Now, people with ADD, they love hate deadlines because it forces them to just take action instead of getting stuck trying to organize that action in their heads. So deadlines can be really helpful. 
Um, for me, when it came time to write this video, I set my Pomodoro timer for one hour and I made myself just sit down and jump into the research. And as I did, I like, I learned so much and now I feel super clear on what some of the main challenges with overthinking decisions are. So then the next day I forced myself to sit down and outline the video. And then as soon as I broke that task down and forced myself to face it, I was able to make progress. So ta-da, now you're watching that video right now. Okay, so in the last two videos, I just gave you a ton of information about overthinking decisions. So let's summarize real quick. Decisions are hard because the number of options is overwhelming and it's hard to make decisions because you're afraid. But you can develop the ability to tolerate that fear and remind yourself that just done is better than perfect. You can handle imperfect decisions and still be okay. Don't look back. And then support your executive functioning by limiting your choices, making decisions visual, breaking tasks down into smaller steps, clarifying your values, and setting a time limit. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you for watching. Let's get better at feeling.